close your eyes and watch your breath and see if you can stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out. We have to train the mind. Concentration occasionally happens on its own, but it's not going to be really solid. And as soon as you realize that you haven't been thinking about much, you leave it. But here we're trying to stay. Keep the mind with the breath. Any other thoughts that come in right now, you don't need them. No matter how interesting they may be or how entertaining they may be, they're not what you need right now. What you need is to get the mind trained. Because the untrained mind can cause a lot of harm. For one thing, it changes very quickly. You set your mind on something good and all of a sudden you find yourself someplace else. And the good things that you would hope to get from your original intention just disappear. And sometimes when you do get good things, your greed, your aversion, and your delusion can make you abuse those things and use them in a way that's going to be harmful for you, harmful for others. We see a lot of people who are very wealthy, powerful, popular, but they're not happy. We see other people who are, seem to be poor, but they are happy. What's the difference? The mind. You have good habits in the mind or the bad habits of the mind. So you want to develop the good ones so that whatever comes your way, you know how to use it well. And the mind has a sense of basic sense of well-being. As the Buddha said, the mind well-trained brings happiness. And although he pointed out the way to do it, each of us has to do the work. Because the reason we're suffering in life is because of a lack of skill in the mind. And you can't make somebody else skillful. You can show them how to be skillful, give them advice. But they're the ones who are going to have to learn how to take that advice and then observe their own actions. Well, the same principle applies throughout life. The Buddha gives advice on how to get the mind into concentration, but he can't concentrate our minds. We're the ones who have to concentrate our minds. He talks about being mindful, being alert. We're the ones who have to be mindful. We're the ones who have to be alert. But in doing that, the mind gets well trained. You learn that you can depend on yourself. You have the strength you need. You have the discernment you need. It just needs to be developed. That's the way that we can come to stand on our own two feet, to live in this world without suffering from the world and without causing suffering for anybody else or for ourselves. Because we've developed insight and we've developed understanding inside. So we know how to give rise to a sense of well-being inside and how to maintain it. So watch your breath. Try to breathe in a way that's comfortable. Ask yourself, what does the body need right now in terms of the breath? And then provide that. It's something you can do. But if you keep at it, you find that it develops lots of good qualities in the mind. The mind becomes more and more reliable something you can depend on when you really need it.